hallelujah. Would you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10? Turn to your neighbor and ask him, did you get it? If you don't get it, you're going to get it. <laughs> Glory. Everybody say, what a challenge. What, a challenge. what an opportunity. Are you being challenged? Yes. That means there's opportunities. <laughs> Sometimes we have to wait till we get challenged to get an opportunity. You know, we had a, a discussion in our Thursday night meeting, and one of the things that came up continued to stay with me, as they usually do sometimes. But I, I believe the Lord wanted to expound more, especially what's happening right now. And uh, again, there's such conflict. And what we see what's happening in the earth is happening in the heavenlies. So if you think that there's conflict on the earth, what do you think that there is in the unseen realm? It's phenomenal. There's such a battle, it's incredible. And we must assist in that battle. You know, we can't get caught up so much in the physical. We must assist in the spiritual. That's why we must assist the angels working on our behalf. We're, it's our responsibility to call destructive fire down in the satanic locations. We, we, you know, through our prayers are the angels dispatched to locations to rescue. That's why we have prayer booklets. There's a war, warfare or prayer in there. If you're not a part of the warfare, then you become a casualty. Amen? That's an area where we must be consistent and alert all the time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 1, hallelujah. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all of our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea, and all were baptized in Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock, and, f and that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of, most of them, God was not well pleased. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples, to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality, as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain, as some of them also complained, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry or services of other gods or desires. Again, what he's talking about, escape. What is escape? It's an opportunity, isn't it? Many times, many people miss the opportunity to escape. And there's a reason why many miss the opportunity to escape the snare of the enemy is because their heart is not aligned with the word of promise. Their heart is not aligned their mind may be aligned in memory of the word of God, but not the heart of action. There's a difference. I know many people that can quote scriptures, and they're totally out of order, 
and out of God's will and timing. Again, without self-examination and willful adjustments, results of the stopping of open opportunities. Again, without self-examination and a willful adjustments in our life, there's results. And one of the results will be a constant fear. Works of the flesh. Missed opportunities will also lead into false opportunities. I'm going to say that again. Miss opportunities will sometimes lead into false opportunities. Because, see, the enemy sees when God is trying to bring an opportunity, the enemy will come and try and lay another one. So when you miss that opportunity, our hope is once we recognize that we missed it, it comes back again, but the enemy loves to bring it back before God's time, and people grab hold of that opportunity, and it's not from God. Because anything that's not of God's time is not God's will. Amen? They'll also lead to false opportunities of lust and desire, sexual debt, sickness, and harm. Any people fall in the traps. We need to bring a constant self-examination in the area of adjustments. Is everybody okay? So that we can escape ourselves and the enemy. <laughs> Again, the word tells us that daily the enemy is setting traps up, isn't he? Missed opportunities. In 1 Corinthians 16, in verse 5. Oh, happy days. Let's speak it together. Now, I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia, for I am passing through Macedonia, and it will be that I will remain and even spend the winter with you, that you may send me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you, if the Lord permits. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. So an open door is called an opportunity. So Paul was journeying, and he was telling others that he was going to come and visit them, but a, a change of plan came. Why? Because there was an open door and an opportunity to minister to those who have been taken captive. Does everybody understand? And many times, because we're not looking at the markers, and we'll talk about the markers here in a minute, we begin to miss these opportunities. Hallelujah. It says in verse 9, For a great and effective door is open to me, and there are many adversaries. Many adversaries. In other words, open doors of opportunities. Now, I want to share with you some things that people miss these opportunities. One of the areas of individuals missing opportunities is negative attitudes. They always think worse first. Individuals that are in that state condition miss opportunities many times. They miss the blessings and to bless, and they also miss the escape or rescue. And one of the areas of this, which is vitally important, listen, we have a past, amen? So there's been things that have happened in our past. In our past, so when people are living from their past and the enemy is trying to bring their past into the present, then they're making decisions according to their past. Now, there are things in our past that didn't work that we made decisions doesn't mean they were wrong or bad. It wasn't God's timing. But sometimes God is trying to bring that decision that you made before, even though it didn't work then, he wants to bring it now. But because they're still bound so much to the past and negativity, he's trying to work it now that something was wrong before to make it right. Is everybody okay? And again, this is where people are 
stiff-necked and stubborn. This is where they walk with an attitude of negativity all the time. So when God is, because they're always connected to something in their past of negativity, when God is trying to bring it to change it around. Does everybody get this? And when people are bound in that arena, they miss the opportunity because they're still thinking of the negative stuff that happened in their past. Well, that didn't work then. Why well, you ain't going to know what's going to work now? This is where it's important to have relationship and be led. See, when you're not in relationship and you're not led and you're not aligned, then you're out of order. God can take anything he wants at any time of your past or present and work it in the uh, past or, or future and work it in the present. Does everybody got it? But we got to let God be God. That's where it's important in the relationship. This lets you know when we miss so many of these things that our relationship ain't right. It's not right. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Again, I want to share about this negative attitude and works first, you know, um, worse first thinking that always brings misleading. Misleading the opportunities now it doesn't mean that I, i'm not talking about sins of your past you, you know what I'm, I'm talking about decisions that were mistakes but not sins is everybody okay hebrews 2 i i'm I, you know i know that in my conversation with the lord he'll bring something from before and I'll say, well, Lord, that didn't work then. He says, well, I'm telling you to do it now. If you do it now, it'll work. I said, okay. Amen. It's called, because it was just his timing. That's all. Hebrew 2. Oh, yes. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we what? Drift away. For if the word spoken through the angels proves steadfast, every transgression and disobedience received a just reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels. Now, listen. He just talked about signs and wonders and gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are called markers. Signs are markers. Wonders are markers. What are markers for? There, there's markers and there's landmarks. Markers are spiritual signs. Landmarks are earthly signs. God brings markers and landmarkers. In other words, heavenly and earthly markers to directions, change of course, for opportunities. Again, without a heart alignment with the word and, and being led by the spirit, the enemy knows how to bring false markers and mis mislead people into false opportunities. And what the end result is bondage and destruction. You can see even right now how many people have sold their souls out for wealth and fame. Amen? Deadly opportunities. Wayward individuals miss an opportunity for, for an uh, eternal heavenly opportunities so in this there could be a word of knowledge there can be conviction conviction also can be a marker now you have physical ones and you have spiritual ones holy spirit can also bring you revelation of something which can be a marker So everybody okay? A 
in Job 24. Oh, happy days. Missed opportunities. Starting at verse 1. Everybody there? Since what? Times are not hidden from the Almighty. In other words, nothing's hidden from him. In God, there is no time. Amen? He's already said a beginning and an end. It's done and over with. But in him, there is no time. He's past, present, future, and forever. Only his creation is subject to time. But as born-again believers, we're not involved in the area of time. Time should not be against us. It should be working for us. Since times are not hidden from the Almighty, why do those who know him see not his days? Some remove what? Landmarks. They seize flocks violently and feed on them. Why? Because these are landmarks that the enemy has placed or the ones that the enemy has replaced that God has set somewhere. But the person doesn't see it. Does everybody understand that? They seize flocks violently. They feed on them. They drive away the donkey of the fatherless. They take the widow's ox as a pledge. They push the needy off the road. All the poor of the land are forced to hide. Indeed, like wild donkeys in a desert, they go out to do their work searching for food. The wilderness yields food for them and for the children. They gather their fa fodder in the field and glean the vineyard of the wicked. They spend a the night naked without clothing and have no covering in the cold. They are wet with the showers of the mountains and huddle around the rock for what of for what of a shelter? False markers, false markers will come. You will not be able to discern it unless you are aligned with the word of God and the anointing. Amen? That's the life that you and I must lead. We must be a place of being led, not misled. Listen, what's going on right now? There's false prophets, amen? False teachers, false religion, there's false media. What's it doing? Those are setting landmarks where people are being misled to false opportunities. And they're believing in things that's causing them problems, destruction. They're allowing the enemy to steal their identities. Remember, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? Again, there's false prophets and teachers that are misleading individuals away from godly opportunities. And Proverbs 29. Guess what the Lord keeps, he keeps reminding us to fulfill our call, to fulfill our purpose, to fulfill our destiny. And not let anything to get in the way of it. But the enemy likes to get us Busy. So busy we miss. And then, you know, the worst thing that we can be can happen is being successful in the wrong assignment. Amen? That's the wrong opportunity. And verse 17. Proverbs 29, verse 17. What does it say? Correct your son and he will give you rest. Yes, he will give, give delight to your soul. Where there is no revelation of people cast off what? Restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. A servant will not be corrected by mere words. <laughs> For though he understands, he will not respond. <laughs> In other words, correction brings what? Direction and protection. Revelation we need in a constant area 
to maintain restraints of the fleshly, selfish reactions. See, when the Lord is talking about an area to where, so he's always trying to bring us opportunities to revelation. Amen? Now, in this it says, correct your son. Well, that's correction. Chastening. Conviction. It says, well, there's no revelation. Why is he trying to do? The correction is to bring us to a place of markers. Markers will lead us to opportunities. He said, a servant will not be corrected by mere words. In other words, sometimes individuals just aren't going to take it by talking to them. There has to be consequences. Does everybody get it? There has to be consequences. And the purpose of consequences is to get an individual back to alertness so that they may see the markers, follow the opportunities. There's two things that God is always trying to bring to me and you. Opportunities of revelation and visitation. Why? Because he knows that revelations maintain the restraints. Amen? And visitations bring a change of life. Psalm 119. So I'm going to say this again so we can get an understanding. Markers bring opportunities. Amen? So we don't want to miss the marker and we don't want to miss the opportunity. And these opportunities are to bring revelation and visitation. That's what God's trying to do with every one of us children. So we're going to be corrected. We're going to be chastised. We're going to get crushed because it is a time of crushing. Why? So that we can become the most powerful sword on the planet. All right, just shut my Bible. Praise God. I was getting ready to go somewhere, I guess. <laughs> Psalm 119. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> and verse 67. Opportunities of revelation and visitations. Our dreams markers. Yeah. Visions markers. What do markers lead to? Opportunities. What are opportunities for? Revelation and visitation. Verse 67. Let's speak it together. Before I was afflicted, I what? Oh, snap. I went astray. But now I align myself with your word. <laughs> you are good and do not teach. Uh, you are good and, and do not teach me your, uh, and teach me your, you are good and do, and do good. And teach me your statutes. <laughs> the proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was a have been what? Afflicted. Why? He got corrected to get what? Back in line. That I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than the thousands of coins in gold and what? Silver. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in your word. I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are right and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. In other words, you have corrected me. You have changed my course. Why? So that I can become more alert and sensitive to the markers that lead to opportunities of revelation and visitations. Isn't that a life of a believer? 
But see, so many people get misled and they get so caught up in everything else. Money is the number one thing people get caught up on. It's called survival mode also. Oh, I need to work to live. Yes, you need no working, no eating. But working doesn't cause you to live. The word says man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If people start speaking the word more, because you'll eat more of the word of God. Amen? And you'll change more. And it'll open more opportunities for God to bring things to you. Oh, he was afflicted. Sometimes consequences are needed, aren't they? Because we're not willing to hear. Again, I want to remind you, it could have been something you've done in a, a, a choice in your past that was an opportunity. <laughs> but God wants to bring it now and say, no, it will work. Did you, ever, did you ever get sick? And you took something once and it worked? And then you took it again and it didn't work? And you thought about going back to take it again, but it didn't work. And the Lord says, go back and take that again because it will work now. Hello? Praise God. That means that we must be led. In Luke 19. Do you ever apply for a job? And you didn't hear anything for a while? And you called and they said they weren't hiring? And the Lord says, call again. And you got hired. Again, do you understand? It is being led by the Spirit of God. This is about everything. This is where the body is being lack of. How many of y'all know God can change anything? You remember when he sent those guys to go find the donkey? They kind of realized, man, wait a minute. It's, there ain't no donkeys around here right now. They're, they're not going to just be hanging out at these places. They're going to be all in their stalls and whatever. But yet there was, there he was. Oh, hallelujah. Luke 19. Is everybody there? Verse 41. I'll never forget when the Lord said to me, I want to witness motorcycle. And he uh, says, I want something with my name on it. And I said, oh, you want me to go buy a used Harley? He said, no. I didn't know about all of these other types of custom bikes and so forth. And, and he sent me into this place. And uh, I went in there and I talked to the guy and whatever. And I, I thought that money was too much money. And, and I left and... I started looking at other places, seeing, Lord, what do you want to do? He says, I, go back there. I sent you there. I said, I don't have the money. And he, like, looked at me like, I own all the cattle, <laughs> you know? What's the problem? And I went back there, and the guy that was, I was talking to him, said, man, I've been waiting for you to come back. I said, what? He said, we got a deal for you. I said, oh, God, it sounds like my old life. <laughs> but they did they had a godly deal and it worked out fine and we got a bike with Christ the King on it but if I didn't obey him and go back I would have never gotten it and everything fell into place the money came when I became obedient hello see so many times people are concerned about the money if you're obedient, if God sends you to do something, he'll provide. He'll make a way. See, but they're waiting for a physical marker when they already got the eternal marker. It's called his voice. Oh, hallelujah. Luke 19, 41. Is everybody okay? 
Let's speak it. Now, as Jesus drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, if you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an, an embarkment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you. That's where that word came from, level you. And your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. What? They missed opportunity, didn't they? Did it bring destruction? Yes, he was trying to make a way of escape, but they wouldn't listen to him, would they? And they read about him the whole time, talked about him the whole time, but missed him when he showed up. <laughs> missed opportunities of visitation bring disasters, can bring destruction also, can bring sickness, can bring disease, can bring debt. Amen? <clears throat> Missed revelations, opportunities of revelation and visitations can cause a tremendous pain and sorrow in an individual's life. John 16. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Why is God bringing this to us now? Warning. Warning, alertness. Why? Because he's trying to get us to revelation and a what? Visitation. How many of y'all know he wants to visit the world? Amen. Verse 12, let's speak it. John 16, 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Hello. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and what? Declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said that he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. Again, the Holy Spirit of truth will lead us to opportunities of revelations and visitations. He will guide us and warn us of the traps of false markers and false opportunities. But this is where your relationship is vital. That's where he says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, where does his righteousness come from? His presence. In Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3. Verse 7. Let's speak it. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their what? Heart. Heart. Why? Because what the enemy wants to do is misalign your heart, doesn't he? And they have not known my way, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be what? Hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we continue or hold on the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Powerful. 
Missed opportunities of revelation and visitation. Many times people miss releasing of provision because still living in the past of things that did not work. Does everybody get it? We must hear his voice. Again, one of the things is about God's will is God's timing. In 2 Corinthians 11. Sometimes God is giving you an opportunity to, for you to bless someone so that you can get a blessing. Amen? Besides escape and all the other things. But that's where you have to be led. Amen? You got to know. In verse 12, Paul wrote, But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity of those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things which they boast. For such as what? False apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Powerful. So God will place an opportunity to expose wickedness, wolves in sheep's clothing. Those full of pride and fear are prime candidates for missed opportunities. They're still bound. God is establishing the sword on the earth in a great and mighty way now. James 4. James chapter 4, verse 1. Then one more scripture, God willing. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war where? And your members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. And you ask and don't receive it because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures called your flesh. Adulterer and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will what? Lift you up. Lust, sin, evil associations. They ask a mist. Look, things can turn around when a person repents. Amen? Amen? So what is he saying? If you'll repent and turn from your ways, all things are going to work to the good. Oh, I'm sorry. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy. Sounds like a weapon, you know? <laughs> Deuteronomy. Got to be a license plate that says Deuteronomy. <laughs> Verse 1, Deuteronomy 28. Missed opportunities. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> J 
Just stop it. Before you get buried alive. <laughs> Verse 1. Now, let's speak it. It shall come to pass if, that means cooperation, you diligently, hello, you alertly, consistently, effectively obey the voice of the Lord your God. Be led by the Spirit to observe carefully all his requirements and commandments and commands, which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. In other words, lots of opportunities. For what? Revelations and visitations. Blessings. Provision. Healing. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and offspring of your flocks, that could be representation of automobiles and things of that degree. <laughs> Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. In other words, your garden. <laughs> Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. Oh, yes. You shall come out again. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command a blessing on you. He will what? Command. He'll command it. I mean, when God commands a blessing on you, you think anybody can affect it? Only you. The Lord will command a blessing on you in your storehouses, in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. We are in a storehouse right now. It's blessed. Amen? But if there's pride, negativity, first worst thinking, it won't be. Amen? The Lord will command a blessing on you in your storehouses and all which you set your hand to. He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a what? Holy people to himself, just as he sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his way, then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be what? Afraid of you. In other words, they'll fear what's in you. Not because of a demon, hello? <laughs> because of the presence of God. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods and the fruit of your body and in the increase of your livestock and possessions and the produce of your ground and the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its seasons and bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. You shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you in this day to right or left to go after other gods and serve them. But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, you're going to miss all these opportunities. Amen? Bottom line. That's what's happening. This is where we're at. God always makes a way of escape. He's always trying to get something to us. He is for us, not against us. Amen? And even when a door, listen, sometimes a door will open for a season and then it's shut. Praise God. That means he's got something better. Or maybe your time and season is done there. Amen? And he's got something more. Stop trying to figure it out. Just listen to his voice and be led. And we'll look for the markers. Spiritual markers and physical markers. Amen? If you see a physical fire, don't go in it.
You know, don't run, run, run lights. It says stop. These are physical markers, but God has spiritual markers that we need to be sensitive to. And when I was staying filled with the Holy Spirit and being cut loose from the things of this earth, being aligned with the Word of God, we won't be sensitive to those. That's why the Word says, forsake not to assemble. Why? Because we can be more sensitive. The more you're in God's presence, the more sensitive you are. The more you surrender, quit looking for the feeling and get connected. Amen? Praise God. Lord, we thank you for your mercies and grace and for your word. We repent for every opportunity you, you sent and every landmark and, and marker you sent that we missed because we're so caught up in ourselves and in this world and in negativity. Lord, have mercy upon us. And again, reconnect us, Lord. Give us the eyes to see it through. Give us the faith to connect. And give us the encouragement and power and strength to say yes, that we may be more sensitive to the things and not dull-hearted or hard-hearted or negative, but positive in every area, knowing that you are faithful to complete what you started and all things will work to the good to those who obey your voice. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen.